Hey everybody, Nick here, and today, well, it's that magical time of the month again, where something just brutally awful arrives on my table, and, uh, well, I try and cope live on camera. So, hope everybody's having a wonderful day today, and, uh, as, as we are, uh, kind of gearing up here and letting everybody, uh, filter into the room, I figured I'd do a couple of sneak previews for you real quick, uh, to show off, a uh, you know, some of what's been on my table, some of what's coming up here soon. So, um, let's go on ahead and take a look at some interesting knives and some not very interesting knives. Um, first off, this is a very interesting piece right here. This is the Holt Knives Spectre. Holt Blade Works. This is a really astoundingly good piece. Um, I ordered this guy directly from the Holtz some time back. It came in, and I've been carrying it for a while. And in fact, I, it's so damn good that I found myself dragging my feet on filming the review um, because, I, you know, I, I figure, oh, well, you know, when I review what I might have to sell, I'm, I'm really con. But this is a great freaking knife. Um, the, the, the Holtz are doing incredible work, and uh, it compares favorably to pretty much anything out there. So this is a really really nice uh, knife, 100%. Let's, um, let's do a crappy knife sandwich, if you will. Um, this right here is not a really, really nice knife. Uh, <laughs> take a look at this thing here. Okay, we start off with this. This little texturing here, which is, um, well, great. But then you look at this guy and you think, well, how do you open it? Well, turns out there's a hole. And when you press your finger through that hole, the blade flips around on a spring. And so this then becomes the ergonomics of this knife. Um, I mean, that's, that's a thing. Um, and so that's, that then becomes how this knife works. Holy crap, is this thing dull? Um, and so, yeah, and then to flip it back, you pull that back, you get past the lock stick, and you spring flip it back the other direction. Um, you know, at some level, I respect, and it tried to kill me. Okay, well, either way, at some level, I respect the idea behind this, that it is certainly different, but then it went and did that. Um, but in, in the name of a crappy knife sandwich, with this, of course, being the crappy meat in the middle of it here, um, uh, this uh, right here is another very good knife, and that's this little guy right here. The uh, Holt, by the way, is looking at about 500 bucks, 495 bucks. This guy is a very, very nice knife that is substantially cheaper uh, than the Holt, uh, and frankly, probably about the same price as that damn Schrade. Um, this is the Kershaw Atmos. This is a brand new sort of affair from Kershaw. It's a Sinkovich design. This is an unassisted flipper from Kershaw, made in China, that doesn't suck. Now, I repeat, oh, hold on, this is not a drill. This is an unassisted flipper from China from Kershaw that doesn't suck. Guys, I, I know, I never thought I would say those words, but it, it really doesn't. Um, people are asking me how much. I believe it's 35 bucks, but I tell you what, chat, if somebody could look that up and let me know, that would be spectacular. But this is actually a surprisingly great knife. It's really well designed. It's got a very small, it's a minimally pocket pecking. Um, it, it looks beautiful with these little carbon fiber inlays. It, it, the blade shape is pretty spectacular. This is everything that I'd hoped like the Nura and whatnot would be, would actually be, but this guy is that. And then it's very small as well. Um, you know, it fits beautifully in the pocket. It's got a nice deep carry clip. This is a knife that I am going to be carrying a great deal before I do the review because I want to make sure that I'm not missing something that makes this absolutely awful. Um, but so far, my God, does it seem good. I mean, they screwed up the sharpening choil. Yeah, that's fine. Welcome to Kershaw. But guys, this thing doesn't suck. And that's amazing to me. Um, and so I, uh, the, 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 those are two knives that really, really don't suck. This guy is incredible, and this guy absolutely is, for the price, really, really, really good. I mean, seriously, look at this. This is a 20, you know, a $30 Kershaw from China, and it doesn't suck. Okay, I, I, I digress. Um, but those are, those are some very, very nice pieces there. But I know, let's be real here, that you all, well, you're not here for nice knives. And so here we are. We have this. This, as many of you may know, um, and some of you may not, as I fall over, um, is the um, 
I order a, a box. I am subscribed. One of the very poor, poorest life decisions that I've made is to subscribe to a box that once a month sends me a terrible knife. I, I don't give the company's name because I don't want them to get any publicity from this, but they send off an awful knife every month. And, uh, well, this month, uh, it's inside here. I've, I've taped over. I, I had the fiancé transfer it into another box. So I have never seen what's inside this box. But i got to be honest with you. I've got a little anxiety here today. Not just because this is a terrible freaking knife, almost guaranteed, but I'm slightly afraid that it won't be. I am slightly terrified. The last few knives that have come out of there have actually not been that bad. It's like they, they've seen this video and are slowly moving up the terrible knife pay scale. I mean, it's not going to be another Holt inside here. That's for damn sure. I, I don't think that inside here is a Grimsmo Norseman. But at the same time, I'm worried that this is going to be yet another really, really kind of barely maybe acceptable knife. I will have overpaid for it. I guarantee you that. But yeah, that's going to be... That's 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 what's scaring me here. But there are a couple of things that we kind of know about this knife. It's probably going to be assisted. Um, Absolutely, it's not going to be super high in the quality. And uh, chances are it's going to be made by my good buddy Usa. Uh, Usa Design. Uh, they claim USA. No, it's Usa. So let's go on ahead... I'm scared, guys. I have, luckily, over here off the camera, I have some backup crappy knives. So I think we're going to be okay, but still. All right. Moment of reckoning. Are we going to get a really bad knife like I secretly want? Or are we going to get something that's okay? Which is just going to be sad. All righty. Let's go ahead and pop it open. Ready? One, two. One, two. Oh, hold on. Sorry. Got another crappy knife I got to show. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a jackass. But look at this piece of crap. This is the cricket two-timer kiss. Okay, seriously. This is a knife that... Look at this blade. To start with, look at this blade. And then underneath that blade, look at this. They have a second blade that can't cut underneath the first one that can't cut. This is the weirdest freaking knife ever, and I, I just, I don't know quite what to do with my life with this knife in it. I, I am trying to figure out whether this is going to be a modern art review, whether this is going to be a tactical high-speed low-drag review. I just don't know what this is going to be, but look at the freaking thickness of this thing. I mean, seriously, here it is against the Spydeco Delica, like the entire freaking knife. And it's almost as th okay. Anyways, I digress. Um, that is a uh, th that is a, a terrible knife that we know about. But the terrible knife inside this box. <sighs> All right, ready, ready. I I almost ready. Are we secure in our readiness for this? All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Bam. Oh, oh yes. Oh ho. Oh, yes. Okay. So, we have ourselves a clone. Or at least a de design homage here immediately. This right here, this little hole at the front of the cleaver is a very, very clear night. Uh... <laughs> This is a very, very clear nod to a uh, gentleman named Rad Knives, R-A-D, uh, whatever, I don't know what the heck his actual name is, but um, he tends to make knives with cleavers that are uh, with, with a little hole in there, and oh god... So, um, that, that, that's, that's immediately I'm seeing that, and I'm, I'm feeling like this is going to be, well, pretty awful independently of that. But I'd like to highlight a couple of other things that are immediately apparent. This milling is actually not bad. It's borderline stylish. Feels like it's, it's speedy. It's, it's high speed, low drag. Um, and so th that, that's kind of good here. And of course, tip down only pocket clip. Um, left side tip down only, naturally. Um, you can see here that the thumb studs on this guy are like really, really freaking long. The, the widest part of this knife are the thumb studs, which means it's going to be really easy as you tip down, sliding this into your pocket to catch that thumb stud on something and fly that blade on open, which is spectacular. You can see that there is oil just dripping out of this guy. Believe it or not, I haven't disassembled it yet, but um, it's already got that oil in there. And then finally, I'd like to highlight that the entire freaking knife is painted the same shade of blue, which implies that they've just got a paint booth and they just had some guy going, oh God, look at that surface finish. 
uh, j j just hit the whole damn thing. This is, however, there are a couple of things to note here. This is a stainless steel frame lock. This right here is a frame lock. You can see it hiding underneath there. That's a little bit unusual out of these kinds of makers. Uh, and so, you know, th th that's maybe a step up or maybe down uh, independently. But, um, yeah, and then the other thing I got to highlight here is, okay, actually, you know what? We're not going to highlight that immediately. I'd like to start a contest in the, uh, in the, the, uh, the, the comments here. This knife, what does it weigh? Right there. Put in your guesses, everybody. Put in your guesses. Whoever's close gets, uh, well, absolutely nothing. I tell you what, if you're closest, you can quit the stream and stop staring at this piece of crap. So uh, I'm seeing 12 ounces here. I'm seeing 8 ounce, 6.8 ounces from Andy Richardson. Okay, 8 ounce, 8 ounce, a lot of people at 8, 7, 7.3, 14 pounds. We have an optimist in the room. 6.9, 7.2, 11 ounces, 200 grams. Somebody in metric. Oh, bless you. Oh, bless you, bless you. A lot of 7s, a lot of 8s. All right, all right. Here we go, here we go, here we go. We're going to put this guy on the scale, and it comes to... Moment of truth, a little bit of suspense here. 6.9 ounces? That's almost disappointing, I gotta say, guys. I... I I, I thought I would have... See, I was coming in at like 7.1, but, you know, hey, whatever. Either way, that's a lot of freaking weight from this guy. Um, But, you know what? A knife is for more than just admiring, although some people don't believe I believe that. What can I say? Uh, so it's time to actually pop this guy open and uh, see what this blade truly looks like. So are we ready? Are we ready? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Bam. You know, that's actually not that bad. I mean, it is kind of based on the Rad Knives Cleaver, which is an attractive design, and there were definitely some immediate flaws, but I gotta say, in terms of suction, uh, this is not all that high in terms of the suck, because, okay, uh, this is probably assisted. Yeah, it's assisted. That's okay. I can live with assisted. You've got yourself the blade-mounted lanyard hole, which is really nice, you know, because, you know, with tip-down carry, that actually kind of makes sense. Because <laughs> you pull it out and then just keep pulling and flies the plate open. Then you can, yeah, okay. Um, so th th that's a beautiful thing. You've got yourself a finger choil, if you have exceptionally small fingers, making this the, the, the perfect uh, pocket knife for your uh, child, if you really, really dislike your child. Um, and hopefully you don't, by the way. Um, Thumb studs. Doesn't work with thumb studs. That's okay. I can live with that. Can I get it? Yeah, okay. I got it that time with thumb studs. So that's that's good. They they even painted the clip. They even painted the clip screws. Like I'm I'm actually seriously wondering whether this whole thing was painted fully assembled. No, because they must add the laser ratchet. Okay. You know, there, there are some obvious signs of suction here. For instance, it is stainless steel. Uh, can I zoom in here? No, I can't. Um, but what I can do is bust out the macro lens. All right, let's get close up on the suction here. Oh, yeah. So you can see here that this is an USA design, of course. My good friend USA, uh, a, a, a well-known designer of terrible knives. Right there, that's, that's pretty excellent. This is stainless steel. It's not surgical stainless, mind you, but it is absolutely stainless. At least so they claim on the blade. Um, it is handcrafted, of course, um, which, yeah, I'm not quite buying. I mean, theoretically, very small hands must have crafted some element of this, but yeah. Um, so that's, that's definitely that there. On the other side here, of course, oh, Mtech, what a joy. We have our pivot, which is actually the only thing on this knife that doesn't, isn't painted this kind of a, uh, you know, dark smurf sort of thing. Um, that's great. Down here we can see the sharpening choil, which they completely and totally butchered here. I'm going to take out my uh, macro mode because my phone is just telling me that you're going to... It's going to puke. So, uh, let's not make my phone puke. Uh, but you can see here that the, um, the sharpening choil is completely screwed up. There is a recurve here because this, uh, the, the plunge grind is a little too far, but... You know, in the grand scheme of things... Oh, um... Oh, you can see the rounding of the tip there. That's really nice on a one cliff blade. Um, let's see if it cuts. Actually, it does cut. It's not all that thick behind the edge. Guys, come on. This is, this is like, like, okay. Is it awful? 
No, not particularly. Like, somebody could carry this knife, and they would be very... This is like wearing a weight belt or something like that. It's a maybe a cross-training sort of thing. Um, but, you know, this is not a knife that's just like, oh my god, brutally awful. I, I've, I've had much, much worse than, than, than this guy on my table from companies that are trying. And so, you know, again, I'm in this weird position where I keep getting these guys, and it it's not that awful. There is no blade play on this knife, which is actually pretty impressive. The centering is actually dead on, which is also pretty impressive. Um, I, you know, I really, somebody just said, oh, okay, who just said that? Um, David B says, this is the sort of knife I can see non-knife people carry. And you know what, David, you are 100% correct. This is a, a knife that would sell like freaking hotcakes to some random jackass in a convenience store. They see that this is, you know, kind of vaguely badass looking. They say, oh, Looks like a nice design. Like, hey, I saw one of those on Instagram. That kind of thing. And then they pick it up, and you know what? They carry it. They realize it goes dull very quickly, but you know what? It's it's probably close enough. And so that this is something that you could carry and be very happy with, provided you're okay with left side dip down carry. And by the way, everybody who's gonna complain, oh, Nick, that's not left side dip down carry, it's right side dip down carry. Watch the damn knife grind. Anyways, that's beside the point. Um, but I, I, I don't, I, yeah, so uh, this is another damn knife that's okay. It's not terrible, it's not brutally awful, it's okay. Luckily, though, I've got something in reserve over here. You see, a viewer of mine who wants to be referred to only as another veggie bastard, because uh, he, too, ha ha has felt the pain of vegetarianism. Um, he has sent to me a knife that he said is really, really, really bad. And this is a person who has taste in knives. This is a person of some knowledge, of some taste. And uh, he has um, sent this guy to me saying that it is one of the very worst knives that he has ever handled. And from this gentleman, I, I, I am tempted to believe him. I have not opened this packet yet. I, I know that there is something in here that's going to be awful. Even the wrapping on it just screams. This is like the wrapping that you would find on a, a three-day-old sub sandwich that you, you pick up from Hot Pavement, where you know there, there's going to be something just vividly awful in here. Not just like, oh, that's unfortunate, but like, oh, my God, I never... I mean, this is just going to be pretty spectacular. <laughs> so um, I'm very, very curious to see what's inside here, and considering that we've already kind of struck out once today, I'm really hoping that my fellow veggie bastard's going to come through for me. Because, uh, failing that, I've got a knife that probably isn't going to be awful over there, but, you know, we will see. So, here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, luckily my work here is done. This is apparently a gem. Um, okay. So now... Now what the hell is this thing? Okay. So, I... I'm not even... Okay. I'm trying to parse this knife. Like, I feel like I'm a person who has handled a knife or two in my day. I, I know a little bit something about pocket knives. Not that much, mind you, but I know something. But I... Okay, let's just break it down. This has a carabiner on the back of it. I can operate this part. I know this. This is, this is workable. See, this way, if you want to carry another knife with your knife, you can do that. And see, it's got a quick deploy feature. Maybe. There we go. See, perfect. It's got your quick deploy feature for your other knife that you're carrying on top of it. That, that, there, there you go. Excellent. See, I told you, that's, uh, that's, that's perfect. And we see a really good sense of the durability of this paint job. Actually, it's not so bad. A couple of little dings there, but um, it's okay. I just lowered the uh, resale value by negative $10. Um, but, so, okay, th I get this part. Um, there is no pocket clip, that's, that's for sure. The torque screws... Look like they're probably Torx. Um, it is by iWork, so clearly it works. Um, and then, aside from that, I'm not really sure what's going on. Because the thing is, there are no conventional affordances for this knife. There, there, there's nothing I can grab. There's no liner. In fact, the blade is pointing in this direction. Um, and so, and it's, okay, it's telling me to push that way. I don't... Okay, so guys, 
right here. It says push. I'm pushing. There is nothing that is being pushed by it. So I don't know what it's telling me to push on, but okay. Um, the other thing I'm seeing is this little guy, which has, um, this must be some Cybertronian symbol here. Um, this is a, a transformer of some variety. Push the other way, somebody's saying. You see an arrow going this way, you tell me to post the other I Okay, you're a rebel, aren't you? Um, I'm maybe, oh, it's a padlock. It must be a padlock. So it looks like I'm supposed to slide this. Okay. Let's play Can Nick Open This Knife? Guys, I'm actually a little bit frightening here. Uh, I'm a little frightening. Yeah, that's for sure, too. But I'm actually a little frightened by this knife because I have no idea what direction this blade is going to come out of this thing. And I value... I'm a hand model professionally. So, uh, at least on the course of this channel. So, we're actually going to go on ahead and... Uh, I'm going to armor up here. I'm, I'm going a little bit tactical, a little bit high-speed low drag, but I want to give myself a layer of protection as I as I push here. So, okay, here we go. We're, we're ready now. I, I am prepared. My body is, is ready um, for this thing, whichever direction it happens to go out of this thing. Um, so, <laughs> John Tedich once says, what the are you even doing? John, I don't know. Um, okay. Oh, okay, you see, it's supposed to, it, this thing pushes in this direction. Okay, so maybe if I press it in this direction, guys, we got it, we got it. Oh, yeah, that's awful. Okay, seriously, look at the blade to handle ratio. Okay, these gloves are, gloves are driving me freaking nuts. I know how it works now. All right, good. There's no spring, there's no, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, wow. So the blade to handle ratio on this thing is absolutely wonderful. I have to highlight that, like, first and very freaking foremost. Like, okay, let's see here. Where do we have... Come here, Viator. Is that about right? Yeah, okay. In terms of sharp and blade length, we are right in the same domain. Both in terms of... Well, this is a bit thicker, but in overall size, we're very similar to the, the to the DRM Viator, which is a much more... Um, a, a much smaller knife. Um, but I'd like you to note that the handle size is... Now, do I push this way and pull? I got it there. But the handle size is slightly different. This is a slightly larger knife. Um... Wow, is this like spring-loaded or something to make this not stupid? No, it's just stupid. It's it's just stupid. And, and so then the, 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 the blade comes out. And I, I have to also highlight, oh, that's so that it clears the... That's so that you can have a standoff there and it still clears. Okay. So, um, we have this guy open. That's good? Maybe? I don't know. Um, once we have it open, we see here that it's got an opening hole. Now, I'd like to highlight this for a second for us here. This knife has an opening hole. There is no way to use this hole to open this knife. This knife opens by pushing... Oh, oh feel that action, guys. Feel that action. Look, this knife opens by pressing this way then that way, but it's got an opening hole. It's unchamfered. Nice. Uh, and so this is just a crud collector. We can deal with that. Um, then let's see. Is it sharp? Will it cut? Okay, parts of it are very sharp. Uh, and then there's no edge from here on up, but that that's something, right? Um, that's that's a speed hole. It reduces the weight. Okay. Um, Yankees, was that Yankees rule? Yeah, Yankees rule 1176 it says it reduces the weight. Now, Yankees, that's a very valid idea here. But the thing is, this knife, um, the weight issues that this knife has are not coming from that little hole. Um, much in the same way that the fact that, you know, the weight issues that I have are not coming from the salad I had for dinner last night, but the three donuts I had for breakfast yesterday. 6.19 ounces. This right here is the equivalent of washing down your triple Big Mac with a Diet Coke. Yeah, you can do it. Yeah, it might help a little bit, but just no. Just freaking no. Um, but 
this is actually... Okay, now that I know this, the, the trick here, I can actually make this work without too much terribility. Um, and this seems at some level like it might be safe-ish. Like, okay... It's not wanting to fail when I press in in this direction here. Um, that's that's good. You've got blade play on both axes. I mean, seriously. Yeah, that's pretty excellent. The steel is completely unlabeled, which means it may or may not actually be steel. Um, this could well be a silver-colored copper alloy or something along those lines. Um, is there anything else in the handle is being asked? No, I believe the only tool that we tool that we have in here is this blade. We've got this carabiner here, which might be able to open a drink. Maybe? I don't know. If I had a beer or something, I'd open it, but I, uh, alas, I don't. I am not super impressed. And then there's that, that action, that smoothness. Listen to this. Oh, yeah. Listen to that. That's some quality action right there. Ay, 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 ay. It's made by Apple. What do you expect? No, I expect it to have terrible software that's rapidly declining if it's made by... Oh, wait a second. Did I just say that out loud? Yeah, I'm a bitter Apple fanboy. Um, yeah, this is this is a thing. Um, think different. They have absolutely thunk different here. Okay. But the problem is this guy hasn't come apart yet. So uh, let's go on ahead and uh, let's make this happen here. We are looking at what looks to be T8, or maybe T6 and T8. No, maybe it's just T6 all around. That's uh, that's going to be excellent. Um, yeah, let's see what we can do here. What direction do you take this thing apart from, even? Why, why do you make this, even? Is this free spinning? No, it's not free spinning. Okay, there we go. Uh, that's good. It's got some evidence of a, a red thread... Locker on there, but doesn't appear to have helped. Why are you not coming loose? Oh, wow. Look at this fastener here. That is some quality warpage right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lubricated with sand. I hate sand. Gets everywhere. It's all scratchy. You know what? One of my big disappointments in life is that in one of my Knife Gripes, I had a series of videos with Knife News called Knife Gripes with Nick Shabazz. Um, it's on hold at the moment, but uh, nonetheless, in one of my Knife Gripes, talking about slipperiness, I, I, I completely and totally referenced the Star Wars Episode 2 Anakin Skywalker Sand Rant, and nobody commented. Like, how do you miss this, people? What the heck are you doing? Anyways, I digress. Why is this not coming apart here? Um, come on. It's probably like glued shut or something. Hold on. Tight tolerances, he says. Yeah, that's it. Okay. That's probably toxic. I have no idea what's going on in that, but it's certainly a thing. Alrighty, um, right there, I, I don't know what this chemical is, but I'm pretty sure some Russian guy just smeared it on a dissident. Whoops, did I just say that out loud? Alrighty, moving along. Oh, it's an integral. Ah, because the handle is there on both sides. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, I'd like you to note the washes that this is running on. Oh, that's right, there are no washes. <laughs> because it's just beautiful in that way. It's just like steel and it's you just see where it's rubbing on the inside there it's just a constant festival of oh so that's a lever oh that's your locking mechanism right there is the hope and the dream that this thing doesn't get pushed in there by a quarter of an inch so that's awesome because if you slide you this is like completely but the nice thing i guess is if it if it fails it's kind of safe because it'll just go back into the handle where it can't cut you that's that's something at least right oy, oy, oy. oh and now that the, the, the freaking this thing's trying to come out it's only held in by one side and even then it's only by freaking spitting well we're not going to think about what the rest of it was um harbor freight would be embarrassed by this even yeah it could well be true 
oh, that's why it's so crappy is because this thing is constantly rubbing on the inside of the liner as it, as it goes. Okay. So see, there's a lubrication strategy here. Not that lubrication is what this knife needs, but I'm going to go on ahead and put more nano oil in this guy in terms of price than the, the, the knife is physically worth. And I'm just going to go on ahead and kind of slather a little bit here. We're going to slather, slather, slather. All right. And now I'm hoping somehow that made it worse. I think it's resisting the idea of being made better. Or maybe it's picking up on something here. I just don't know. It's like it's, it's committed to being awful. And so it doesn't want my help. Oh, yeah, you can see a little bit of the crap coming off of there. First square milling. Please describe more of the smells. Um, I wish I, I could. This is, this just smells, this smells like pain to me. Let's be real there. I'm going to try and get some, oh, hold on. I'll deploy the blade here first. Um... I'm going to try and smear a little bit more, and I'm using the 85 weight nano oil because I'm insane, uh, but mostly because I know that that is thicker and that that might help me out here, but I'm going to try and find the areas where it is, uh, where I see visible marks, there we go. Areas where I see visible marks, like the Soviet Union. Ah, uh, ah, uh, communism joke? No, nothing? All right, I tried, right? <sighs> Anyways, um, yeah, and just see if that makes this suck any less. The thing is, it's like it's repeatedly binding. It's just like going back and forth in there as I'm doing this. Oh, God, the, the action is getting worse somehow. Okay, no, 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 it's smoothing out now. This effectively being, you know, more care and love than this knife has ever seen and likely ever will see. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Is this like trying to cut my fingers open? Probably. Oh, okay, I'm seeing another area of wear up here. No love for the visible marks, Joe? That was kind of funny. Um, okay, maybe it wasn't kind of funny. I should be real with this. Slower. Oh, God. If there's any kind of backwards angle to this, it just does this awful... Oi, oi, oi. Ah. Like, I, I, I don't even know how to describe to you how unpleasant this feels. It's... It... Okay, you know the guy Sabretooth from X-Men? Um, with the, the, the adamantium long claws there. Okay, so imagine this building, like a very tall skyscraper in some major downtown area that is filled, like the sides of this building are made with alternating stripes of chalkboard and sandpaper. Now imagine this guy jumping off the top of the building, locking his fingernails into it, and then sliding down the entire building, alternating between... The, 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 the sandpaper and the chalkboard. That is the amount of unpleasant that doing this thing with this knife feels. It's just, it's, it's brutal. It's, it's awful. Um, and I, 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 I don't know that I can help this. I don't know that this can be helped. I don't know that this needs help. Maybe it's just its own thing. Maybe I, maybe I, 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 maybe I should just, let it be. Maybe I should let it live its life. Maybe. In fact, that's the approach I'm going to take here. I'm going to let this guy live his life. Live and let live. Let the eye work do his eye work. Um, oy, 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 oy. Now, let's go on ahead and lock this guy back together. I'm going to use a little bit of Loctite because no way in hell am I getting in there again. And the unfortunate part is I can't break it down any further because it's, it's one continuous chunk in there. Come on, get in there. Go. Go home. By the way, I hope you enjoyed that whole Wolverine metaphor. That was just about it, or uh, Sabretooth, that is. People saying, oh, you mean Wolverine? No, I don't mean Wolverine. The heck do you think I am, a heretic? I mean Sabretooth. Wolverine could do it too, but I, I like the idea of more fingers scratching. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, blowtorch, that could be one approach. 
All right, let's, let's pinch this down a little bit. Like the maker of this pinched it off. Why do I have the blade open? Because I'm an idiot. That's probably why. Speaking of idiocy, uh, right here is an EGTAC D25 AAA. This is an interesting flashlight. This is one that Tony Scalambrini over at Everyday Commentary uh, has uh, mentioned. And by the way, if you're uh, ever looking for a little bit more jackass in your life, um, uh, I am now a, a co-host of the, the podcast Gear Geeks Live. It's at geargeekslive.com. I've been showing up there a lot lately, and so they've made me a co-host, they being Tony. And, uh, but anyways, he recommended this light to me, and I bought this light probably in October or something like that. And I, you know, used it a couple of times, and then I, uh, I, I lost it. I couldn't figure out where the heck this guy was. I, you know, I kept thinking to myself that maybe I left it someplace. It was in my pack or something. There's, there's a problem. Um, and today, I'm crawling around under my desk trying to uh, tighten a, a nut that's under there. And I find that this guy has used its magnet to adhere itself to the bottom of my desk. Well, more specifically, this idiot used that to adhere this guy to the bottom of the desk. So I had some light under there at some point, and then I freaking left it there. So I've been looking for this for, for you know, months, trying to figure out where it was. And it was under my damn desk the whole time. I am not a brilliant man, people. I am just not a brilliant man. So, yeah. You know, I think this is maybe slightly better than when I started. I mean, it, ah, no, I'm not doing that anymore. That's, that's, that's awful. That's, that actually, oh my God. So, Veggie Bastard, who sent this along, you're freaking terrible, but thank you. This is so bad. This, this right here is false advertising here. Okay. I am going to just make very clear false advertising. There we go. Four exclamation points should get it across. This is not a gem. Go ahead and cross that out. No, no, not a gem. No. All righty. Anyways, but thank you very much there, Veggie Bastard, for sending this guy along. When else would I have gotten to see something just so tragically, tragically bad? <laughs> All righty. So that was awful. That was, that was really, that was genuinely and truly unpleasant. Um, as a palate cleanser, I'm going uh, to unbox one last thing that I haven't seen here. So, uh, some time back, and okay, I, I got to go full disclosure right here, right? There, there, there is some disclosing to be done, and it's going to be full. Uh, right here. Nope. Hold on. Let me get this guy out of the way. Let whatever residue of whatever that is that's going to put me in a coma tonight. Go back over with the mat there. Uh, but anyways, this, uh, I've been a member of this particular crappy knife box for a little while there. And recently a competitor of said crappy knife box reached out to me and said that they are making a knife box that is in fact not crappy. Um, and I, I don't necessarily know that I believe them, but I said, you know, hey, what the heck, let me take a look. And so I got a, the, this knife box from them the other day. It is, uh, the, the, these guys are the monthly knife club. Uh, and this is their Onyx level. Like the, the, the O-N-Y-X, like the Pokemon, basically. And uh, this little guy showed up, and I wanted to just make sure there were no, like, receipts or anything in there. But um, this was sent to me directly from the manufacturer as a freebie I, in exchange for me taking a look at it on the video. So there you go. That's your full disclosure. But I don't actually know what's in here yet. So um, apparently this is uh, the Kaiser <laughs> the Eliminator frame lock. Oh, good Lord. Okay, so we know it's got a douchey, uh, douchey name. That's, that's pretty great. And it includes premium packaging. Current internet pricing, $210. All righty. The end. Oh, hashtag special treatment. I hope you enjoy the enclosed knife. Keep up the good work. Oh, that's adorable. Um, but okay, let's take a look and see what we're getting eliminated here. Ah, bye. Okay, okay. This is the standard Kaiser package. I can't say it's super premium, but it is definitely a thing. Pop this open. I think Kaiser is actually, they know their audience because they've made this packaging very hard to get into without a knife. So let's get a knife. Huh? Huh? Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm not going to use a good knife. Nah, ah. -uh. Okay, now let's play. Will this actually open this? Ah, here we go. That right there is a nice clean cut. 
Oh, yeah. Hashtag quality. Um, so, the Eliminator. Let's see what's inside here. Inside here is a box. Welcome to Kaiser. Precision indeed, powerful canine. Inside here is a polishing cloth. I now have roughly a bazillion of these polishing cloths. Yes, one right over here. It's been well used and loved. I think there's a Kaiser. Well, either way, I got a bazillion of these polishing cloths. They're pretty good. They're handy. Uh, please enjoy your new knife in a safe and responsible manner. All right, let's see. All right, let's get eliminated here. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Bam! Okay, that's not all that bad. Actually, that's fine. This has got to be Vagnino, right? You Vagnino? Vagnino. Yep, there you go, Vagnino. It's a Vagnino kind of thing. Um, It does absolutely look like some variety or another of underwater life, I would say. Um, it's got a weird recurve going on here. It is S35VN. That's, that's good. Um, it's a titanium frame lock from Kaiser. Uh, wow, what a shock, right? Okay. Holy pocket pack of Batman. I just noticed that. Holy crap, guys. This is like, and it's like a weird pocket pecker, too. It's not like, like, okay, I, I've been thinking a lot about pocket peck of physiognomy lately. Um, you know, anytime you got these long pocket peck and flip -a tabs, I they all have a face to me now. I'm just thinking about this, this is a thing here. And they've all got a face, but I gotta be honest here. This pocket pecker right here, for some reason, looks like a freaking nerd. I, I, I don't know why, and I am a nerd, so I should be able to understand this fact, but um, th this looks to me like a really, really geeky bird. Um, and so that to me is what I'm seeing here. Like, the, this is the Poindexter of pocket peckers, which is pre pretty awesome, I'll say that. Um, Action-wise, it's actually pretty good. Uh, it's contoured titanium. Okay. It is... S35VN. The blade stock is just stupidly thick. I mean, seriously, look at that behind the edge. Although part of that's because they just completely botched the chopping joil. Oh, this is the Eliminated 2. Although I liked it too, is on a completely different line here. <laughs> the pocket peck in Picasso. Okay. And a little swedge. It's nice enough. Okay. Yeah, it's not a bad knife. Look, if I'm paying 210 bucks for it, is this the knife I would want to pay? No, absolutely not. Um, this is a uh, <laughs> EDC with Aaron says. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'd like to give this a nice long anno chop. Yeah, I can see that. This is a knife that is <laughs> just begging for anodization. <laughs> if you... <laughs> Sorry. Um, if you're curious why I'm laughing, look up. I got an old, old video about why uh, the, the one simple trick makes reading knife Instagram 90 times better. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I mean, for, for 210 bucks, I, I, let's put it this way. I know why this knife ended up in a discount box. But at the same time, is it bad? No, oh, like, hey, finger choil maybe-ish, kind of, sort of, right? Ish? Kind of? Finger choil, separated at birth. Usa equals Vagnino. Conspiracy confirmed. Anyways, I don't know. I, I don't have any evidence for that, by the way. But, um, yeah, that's, uh, it's a fine little knife. I'm sure it'll, this is, look, this is a knife that you could give somebody and they'd probably be very happy with it for a long time. But it's probably not a knife I would go out and buy on my own. There you go. So, um, anyways, that is the, uh, the it's the, 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 this Onyx Monthly Knife Club sort of thing. Current internet pricing, 210 bucks. I don't actually know what it costs to join up on this, uh, but, you know, take a look at that. Um, Paul Greenwood says, still more useful from those, than those idiotic Ducksbill Grimsmo things. He is, of course, referring to another knife with a weird recurve, the uh, Grimsmo Knives Norseman, which sadly was not in either of these boxes here today. But, um... And actually, what's this guy's pocket peck and personality? This one always looks a little bit surprised, right? Yeah, I can see that. But he's also a little bit prim. Like, can you see this guy drinking tea with this kind of a face on him? Yeah, he's drinking tea. Yeah, you know it. Um, uh, but yeah, anyways, so there you go. This is another item. It's a, uh, it's a fine little knife. Safe. Should be. 
safe. Yeah, there you go. Case closed. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Um, it is now uh, been about 45 minutes. I'll, I'll take uh, anybody got any ask the Nick sorts of questions while I'm, uh, while I'm streaming here. Because, you know, why the heck not? I got my knife collection over here. I got, I, I can always bust this guy out. That seemed to be a real crowd pleaser. By the way, this grip right here, you're never getting that from anything else. Oh, boy. The B-hole grip is definitely a thing. It's like the bowling ball of knives. Um, ASMR operator is asking when the face reveal is. Okay, you're an ASMR person, so you like when people are whispering into the microphone. It's never gonna freaking happen. Eh? Eh? Give you a little tingle? I really hope not, because actually, no, do not tell me if that gave you a tingle. Moving on, next question here. All righty, um... <laughs> Let's see here. Steel Will Modus, would you recommend? I actually have a review of the Modus coming up. I got one out of the box that was just brutally awful. Uh, it had a flipping action that basically wasn't. I thought that I might be able to fix it. This is a, a good, you know, this is a good lesson to learn for, for, for life in general, actually. If you got something on your table and it's not right, don't spend a bunch of time trying to fix it. If it wasn't love, it wasn't love. Uh, and in fact, this one was just poor factory tolerances. It doesn't apply so much to relationships. Although, God, that'd be a terrible thing to say during a breakup. Oh, I'm sorry. Your, your tolerance is a way off from the factory. I, I just, I, I, you got vertical blade play, horizontal blade play. Come on. You're centering on it. You're not even centered. No, that, that, that's not a thing to say. But anyways, I, um, I, 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 I digress. Um, so it was, that one was particularly poorly made, but honestly, even were it made well, um, I do prefer the cut jack, um, but that's, I think, very much hashtag bias, because it does have this nice forward finger choil. Ergonomically speaking, it worked a little bit better for me, and I, I just, I found it to be a more compelling knife in general. I, I, I own a cut jack. The Modus is already headed off to a lucky patron who actually got it as a, a giveaway sort of thing. So uh, there you go. Um, thoughts on, uh, let's see here, uh... Should I EDC, hold on there, uh, one of those Walmart multi-tools with a hatchet and a hammer? Mm. Yes. Okay, next question. Um, let's see here. Uh, Nick, will you review the Boka Kalashnikov? Boka Kalashnikov is a really well-known automatic knife. Look, I haven't been doing that many auto reviews because honestly, they're not that interesting to me. Now my freaking desk is covered in Kaiser packaging. Um, but anyways, they're not that interesting to me, all told. They're, they're okay. They're fine, I guess. But I don't really feel a compelling use case for automatic knives in my life. And so, uh, you know, I haven't spent that much time with them. I'm going to do a couple of others. I'm probably going to do the Hawk Deadlock. Um, and I, I, uh, but aside from that, I, I don't think I'm going to spend too much time there. They're also legally a little bit funky a lot of places. So uh, I, I think I'll skip that. Um, but yeah, here, we'll uh, put some, uh, some table decoration down. This is a really bad representative sample of the world, isn't it? There we go. Here we go. I have a big old Swiss Army knife and the cricket that I almost suspect might not suck either, which is weird. But, uh, yeah, so there you go. Um, do I have any thoughts? Josh W. is asking me, do I have any thoughts on William Henry knives? Yeah, actually, I do. Uh, William Henry is a, a high-end luxury brand. Actually, you know what? I'm going to have some mercy on you guys. Take this out. Put this guy in. Um, <clears throat> William Henry is a luxury brand for men. They are a company who really does most of their business by selling really, really fancy materials that are shaped like knives. And you know what? The, the knives they sell are okay, but from a knife guy perspective, looking at these from like fit and finish, blade centering, it just overall, they're not super impressive to me. The actions aren't very good. These are knives that are, they're knife-shaped jewelry, basically, is the way to look at it. And the problem is, you know, a lot of people say, well, Nick, what's the problem with that? Well, there's no problem with that, but the problem is they're wanting like hundreds and hundreds of dollars for them when there is really good knife-shaped jewelry out there in the world. This guy, the Alamic Busker, this is knife-shaped jewelry, 100%, but it's really good knife-shaped jewelry. It is a good knife that is also beautiful. The Millet Torrent that I've got that I'm still freaking over the moon with. This little guy is so good. This is jewelry. 
but it's really good jewelry, and it still cuts things, and it's got a beautiful action. It's a beautiful knife that is also a beautiful functional tool, and I don't really feel that way about the William Henry stuff. Is it okay? Yeah, sure, and if you really love the look, then fine, but it is a gentleman's accessory, much in the same way that you get a good tie tack or something, rather than a, a good cutting tool or a knife or something like that. Um, so yeah, that's a, uh, that's definitely, that's kind of how I feel on the William Henry's front. Um, let's see here. Uh, Steve Rasmussen is, uh, hey Steve, is asking, uh, Eschaton and Gent reviews coming soon. Ferrum Forge Gent, crap, I need to release that. Guys, I'm in this awkward situation lately. I mean, I'm, my life is just an awkward situation. Let's just be real here. But I'm in this extra awkward situation where I have a bunch of stuff that I want to get review released pretty quickly here. Like, you know, I, I have the Ferrum Forge Gen. I want to get out there. I want to get the MIDI Tolk out there. I want to get a bunch of crap out there in the world for people to see. I have a big backlog of videos, which is a good thing, because my life is getting crazier and crazier every day. I'm busier and busier, so having a backlog is good. It means I can afford to not film as often as maybe I'd like to, um, and still, you know, be able to put out consistent content. But anyways, so I have all these knives that I want to get out there, that I want to show off, but I, I haven't had the opportunity to yet. The gent is a really good argument, though. Maybe, because I think the mass drop drop on that is closing, like, tomorrow or something. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I, I'd like to do that. Uh, maybe I'll drop it soon. But either way, that, that's definitely on my mind. The Eschaton, I'm going to be honest, I have not filmed yet. This was um, sent to me. Well, it wasn't actually sent to me. A viewer of mine is at basic training and asked me if I could pick one of these guys up and that he would buy it from me at whatever price I paid. And so I got this guy, you know, and I'm basically holding on to it for him. So there's no rush whatsoever. And I haven't really had a chance to film it yet because I just don't know what the heck to do with this thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of crazy. And I'm torn between modern art, high speed, low drag, and playing it straight. Um, and so I just don't know. Um, so I, I haven't filmed this guy yet. The review is going to be a little while. Um, but what I can certainly tell you is that if you were buying this as a knife to carry every day, do not buy this as a knife to carry every day. I mean, you can carry it, but this is art. True and true. Nothing else. Um, there you go. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, good question, though. Uh, let's see. Join the drop without my thoughts on it. Look, I can give you my quick thoughts on the gent, which is that it is a great knife. There is a lot of really good stuff there. Um, it has, it is lacking exactly one thing, which is a, a little single jimp in the back of it there. It needs that. So, uh, yeah, aside from that, um, Little Giant Indy 317 asked me, when am I going to buy a ball watch? I'm actually, they're really nice. Ball is a company that uses tritium, which is a little radioactive substance inside a little tube that uh, provides loom that lasts all night long, that frankly lasts for the half-life of tritium, which is like 12, well, actually for many half-lives, it's how half-life works, the, the, the decay. But anyways, it lasts for a long-ass time without charging it. Ball does really nice work. Um, aesthetically speaking, their styles aren't exactly talking to me, but they've got some really good stuff. So yeah, there you go. Great question. Would I carry a knife with a high-polished blade? Yeah, absolutely. I have no problem with that because, honestly, a lot of my cutting tasks are not so hard to do. Do I have anything with a high-polished blade? No, my uh, my old Torrent had a little bit stronger of a polish on it. Um, this one does still have some polish to it, but it is damage steel, so that makes it a little bit better. Um, but no, I, you know, I would carry one, but, you know, in general, this kind of a blade, just with a nice machine finish, works well. It shows you the beauty of the materials. It gives you some reflection and whatnot, but it's not a... Um, but it's not like, you know, over the top extravagant. Although, tomorrow, actually, I will be dropping my review of the um, Rockstead Ego. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, that will be a very interesting review and may actually break a heart or two. So, yeah, that's a. Uh... Okay, hold on. If I pull this back, can I get this to flip shut? I am probably going to stab myself here. Like, I feel like I should be wearing a bulletproof vest or something for this test. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm stopping. I, this has reached the point with the amount of force that's required there with this grip. Okay, I, no, the answer is no, just no. Bad idea. Do not try this at home, children. And adults, for that matter. I should know better. Um, let's see here. Is the 940 actually a really nice steak knife, uh, like your daughter says it is? So, of course, talking about the Benchmade 940 here, which is a, um, 
I don't know. In terms of steak knives, I, honestly, I think you're going to have trouble beating the uh, good old-fashioned open L, uh, which is right over freaking here. <clears throat> this is really a knife that you carry not for the odds, but for the steaks. Huh? 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 Um, because it is a really nice cutting machine. It's, it's just, it's a beautiful freaking thing. So this is a really nice knife for steaks as well as for other things. But, uh, the 940, I think probably would work just fine. But the, at the end of the day, what the heck do I know? I'm a vegetarian. So, uh, come on, I'm recycling jokes. Synth gal, there were only so many out there. Only so freaking many out there. But I, I, I would probably, if I was going to be buying a dedicated steak knife, I would do this for 12 bucks rather than this for 170. Just, just saying. Um, let's see here. Uh, anything else here? Um, what about the gent for steaks? I just don't know. I, I again, you're, you're asking the wrong damn guy here. You do not ask an herbivore about steaks. It's just not something I understand. Uh, this guy could work really well if you're, like, trying to take him out of the cow or something. But, uh, yeah. I don't know. Um, anyways, actually, it is 55 minutes into this. My, uh, my voice box is, is shutting down here, folks. And, uh, I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that whatever was inside this guy is not gonna kill me in my sleep tonight. And, uh, most of all, I hope that you enjoyed this live stream and that you have yourselves just an absolutely freaking wonderful rest of your day. Bye, everybody.